Madras. A document which has been prepared by Hungry Hospital for Diabetes staff to order them are sitting there. And with inputs from scientific ah. input from experts from like Dr. Andrew Bolton, Eva Feldman. And this will be very useful for Indian doctors who are practicing in rural areas. Okay. And we can do it in a very simple manner. So you can avoid what are the two kidney failure, amputations, whatever. So I request Dr. Andrew Bolton to release it and Sir, okay, sir. 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 Okay, Sir, one second. Pleasure to be back here in Chennai, a city that I know very well. I was first here uh, 35 years ago, which seems a long time ago. And this is a very important event today because this is the launch of a good little booklet to help people in primary care across the state and also can be rolled out across all of India how to screen for diabetic complications the complications of diabetes the late complications that affect the feet the kidneys and the eyes are silent the patient may have no symptoms until it's too late so a simple screening is the most important message and this booklet written by my good friend Dr. Vijay Wishwanathan from Royapuram the MB Center there. This is a very important booklet which will help primary care doctors with simple guidelines how to detect those complications of diabetes when it's early enough that you can do something to prevent them to progressing. And it's the progression that leads to foot problems, amputations, kidney failure, blindness, and death, all of which should be preventable if we screen patients early. So this is a step in the right direction for screening for kidney disease and foot problems. How to do it simply in primary care. And the most important message from someone from the West is that you do not need any expensive equipment, any expensive tests to identify the patient at risk of late diabetic complications. Simple clinical medicine, for example, don't ask the patient how are your feet, take the shoes off, look at the feet, and help the patient to understand if there is a problem, that they can do something about it to prevent foot problems and prevent amputation. Nandri. Uh, professor of Medicine University of Manchester in the UK, and visiting professor at the University of Miami. I'm a past president of European Diabetes Association and the next president of the International Diabetes Federation. And one of my favorite countries in the world is India, especially Tamil Nadu. Nandri. Vascular disease, it affects every single blood vessel in the body and today we are going to talk about kidney and the foot complication and why we are here today I'll explain to you. <coughs> we showed in a study some 10 years ago, 9 years ago that the total cost of diabetes care in India was about 31.9 billion US dollars. Now we found that as the number of complications increase you can see that the cost of diabetes care increases. This mouse is not working, no? Mouse is not working. Mouse, yeah. Yeah. Mouse, mouse. <coughs> as you can see, the number of as the number of complications increase, the cost increases, and the this is the loss of man days. You can see loss of man days, the loss of median income, direct cost, indirect cost. Everything increases. So as far as you have diabetes, there's not much problem. The moment you start getting complications, kidney, eye, foot, then the cost goes up double, triple like that, you can see. That's the purpose of this slide. Now, do have Indian patients have money to pay for their treatment? Not really. You can see that in this study, we showed that in people who have a lesser income, 
they actually end up the green bar is borrowing they borrow money okay and if you are a little person with a little higher income you will end up actually using a personal savings today i had the story of a man who came for a foot infection he said he sold two cows this cows so i asked him what's the rate of one cow he said 30000 rupees that's about uh, thousand dollars and so you get 30000 rupees he sold two of his cows and came for treatment so you see this is how people are managing in rural tamil nadu rural india selling cows selling their land so this is why the lancet when they asked me to write a commentary some time ago last year i wrote that the big biggest challenge in india is providing diabetes care for the rural population because they don't have access to care talking about the kidney you can see the chronic kidney disease about 42% of the chronic kidney disease is due to diabetes now the problem is chronic kidney disease is very silent it passes through several stages but the doctor and the patient diagnose kidney disease at this stage it's too late it's very late you see by the time you have come to this stage your kidney is ready for replacement dialysis transplantation and so on where by if you see ckd chronic kidney disease which requires dialysis transplant you can see india constitutes about 15% china is only about 10.7% so there is so much of kidney disease in india okay now this is from our country shows that about 32% of the kidney disease ckd is due to diabetes one third so one third of the patients who go for dialysis transplant are having diabetes as a cause we estimated the cost of diabetes the direct cost for kidney disease in india we published this in the indian journal of nephrology and we found that we found that that slide has not come up we found that the cost was very high for dialysis in india in that study we showed people cannot afford dialysis they can afford for one month two months after that they can't afford they die transplantation you don't have dead bodies cadavers in india so transplant is also not happening much so if somebody gets kidney disease in india this is a very bad situation and you can see it's very very silent killer kidney disease only when the creatinine goes to three or four patients will realize that they have kidney disease by the time it's too late and this is a study which we did some 15 years ago when we found that if you have kidney disease then you have lot of retinopathy 100% have retinopathy 60% have blood pressure 44% have heart disease but not only when you have kidney disease you have kidney problem but you have heart problem you might have to go for a bypass surgery so now in this study we looked at 12 years how people develop kidney disease and we found that the most important reason is control of diabetes HbA1c the presence of retinopathy systolic blood pressure and all that it is possible in india to prevent kidney disease provided you control diabetes blood pressure triglycerides and so on talking about the foot lot of people in india lose their legs <coughs> diabetes if you take amputation the commonest cause seems to be diabetes and in this study which we did across three countries in germany and africa and in india we found that the amputation rate was much higher in india and africa compared to germany and we found that most of the people were in tanzania africa and india were having amputation rates because of a condition called neuropathy of which prof andrew bolton is a big expert and infection so that was the main reason now this was a study which we did pan india all india looking at the amputation rates and you can see that we did so many so many places so many states in india among diabetologists and we found that the commonest cause again was infection 90% on top of neuropathy that means most of the legs people are losing in india is preventable because they have neuropathy and then they get infection 
and we also showed that people coming from the rural areas in Tamil Nadu and other parts of India, they get more food complications. Now, what about the cost of people who undergo repeated amputation to Europe? You can see that three thousand dollars is the amount spent by people over two years if they have repeated amputation, whereas it is only nine hundred and thirty dollars if they did not have any foot complication or any complication due to diabetes. Therefore, to prevent amputation, we need to take steps. The first thing is to teach our patients how to take care of their feet. This is what we have been doing in the last 30 years in our foot clinic. And we have been teaching patients how to take care of their feet. Footwear has been a big challenge in India. But in 1991, we took local cobblers from the street and made them, taught them how to make footwear in 1991, about 28 years ago. And then we had this collaboration with CLRI and CFTA, which is only a few kilometers, miles from here. And we have started using our own people to make footwear. As you can see, these are our footwear manufacturing people who sit in Royal Prom and make these footwear. You can see these very beautiful designs. Because people with diabetes want stylish footwear. If you give them this MCR footwear, rubber footwear, they're not really happy. Therefore, we started developing some newer models for footwear for people with diabetes. This is just to show you what the work we have done in the last 30 years uh, in the foot clinic and kidney clinic. And we showed that by just foot care education, we can actually prevent amputation in India. This was a study we did in 2005. The second part of the talk, I want to tell you about the survey which we are going to do in Tamil Nadu to find out amputation rate. So the World Health Organization, we report to Geneva directly. We are a WHO collaborating center. And the WHO has told us to conduct, as one of the terms of reference, Geneva has told us to conduct a survey across Tamil Nadu, which I'm going to tell you now, to find out the amputation rate. They want to know what's happening in Tamil Nadu. So this is what the WHO letter to us says as a WHO collaborating center that we should report within two years to WHO about the amputation rates in Tamil Nadu. What we're going to do for the World Health Organization is we're going to study the trends in the rate of lower limb amputation among people with diabetes. We are trying to find out the incidence prevalence of lower limb amputation using the hospital registry of hospitals in Tamil Nadu. So we are going to take hospitals we're going to take doctors in Tamil Nadu and tell you which all areas we're going to choose. And we're going to see how many amputations are happening. There might be hernia operation, eye operation, how many operations happening in the hospital, bypass operation. But we're going to see how many people's legs were amputated in these hospitals. So this is the study which we are going to do. It is going to be a study which will look at hospital records or registry. And we are going to use a randomized chart, which I'll tell you in a minute. And we will get information from individuals and from hospital level. We are going to collect data from the last four years, from 2016 to 2020. And the study will go up to 2021. And we are going to see how many amputations are happening in Tamil Nadu state due to diabetes. We don't have data from anywhere in India. This will be the first study in Tamil Nadu, yeah. across India. This Tamil Nadu study will be the first study to look at amputation rates. We have already received approval from about eight institutions. And we have started a piloting, a pilot study by sending the questionnaire. These were the districts which were selected. Chennai, Virudhanagar, Erod, Kiruvaru, Ramana, Dharmapuri. It was all done by randomization. Because we had the whole of Tamil Nadu, and we could not study the whole of Tamil Nadu. So these places in Tamil Nadu have been chosen by what is called randomization. And these are the districts which have been chosen by randomization. It is not that we wanted, but the randomization chart showed like that. And this study, in another one year, will throw some light. For the first time in India, Tamil Nadu will be the first state to give some data 
about amputation to the rest of the country. We don't have data from either the government of India or any institution in India. Lastly, as I told you, kidney disease is a very, very big problem. Foot problem is a very big problem. But rural physicians do not have a book, do not have any guidelines on how to check for kidney disease in say rural Bihar or in rural Tamil Nadu, what they should do. They are confused because these guidelines which are written talk about many things. But people like Professor Andrew Bolton have published simple by using tuning fork and all that. Professor Andrew Bolton and others have published that you don't need expensive 1 lakh rupee gadgets and 50,000 rupees gadgets. All that you need is the tuning fork. You must have seen all doctors carry a tuning fork and a knee hammer. All doctors will have, students will have, MBBS students will have. So this book talks about how a primary care physician, rural physician in rural Tamil Nadu and in rural Bihar, uh, rural Andhra, wherever, can take a person with diabetes. Nowadays, rural physicians, what they do is they check blood sugar and tell the patient, okay, your blood sugar is normal. But they don't check the feet, they don't check the kidney, and so on. So this book, what we are going to release today, because Andrew Bolton is going to release this book, will be helpful to physicians, rural physicians, to look at the foot, look at the kidney, and make an early diagnosis. I think I have come to the end of my talk, and I request Professor Andrew Bolton to talk to us about this very important problem, kidney and uh, foot, and he is going to represent the International Diabetes Federation next year. The International Diabetes Federation is based in Belgium, and it represents 193 countries across the world, and he is going to be the president next year for the whole world. Well, thank you very much, uh, Vijay. It's a pleasure to be here. My first visit to this city was in 1985. 1985, Madras, and I went to the Professor, his own centre there, Vishwanathan Centre in Wayapur. And I remember giving a lecture there, I think people, I was a senior medical student there, if I remember correctly. So I've been coming to India for many years and it's always a delight. And when I'm asked here, well, teach us what we can do about the diabetic foot, I say, no, no, you taught us, because we've learned how to look after the diabetic foot from centres like um, Karigiri, Velour. Chengo Put, where Dr. Paul Brand and other missionaries work looking after the foot in Hansen's disease. And the damage to the nerves is a different cause, but the end result is the same, the loss of the gift of pain, as Dr. Paul Brand said. So we do have a problem. This is the uh, Global Emergency of Diabetes, published uh, every two years. The next one will be out in December. But you can see that there's a huge rise in this global epidemic of diabetes. These data from your neighboring country to the northwest of Pakistan are very frightening. This is a population-based study published last year, and it shows that 26%, more than one in four of adults in Pakistan has type 2 mainly diabetes. I was fortunate a couple of years ago to share the stage with Sri Narendra Modi, uh, your impressive Prime Minister. And he got up, got up at this conference in, in Bangalore and he said the biggest threat to the health of India is no longer malaria, HIV AIDS, tuberculosis. It's non-communicable diseases like diabetes. And I told him you're absolutely right. And he is right. So there are moves in this country. You've got a leader who understands the problem I hope this translates into something more than understanding we're doing something about it. Now, my good friend, Professor Shashank Joshi, uh, who you may know from Mumbai, he talks about India is suffering from affluenza. In other words, we're moving from the hunters-gatherers, as it used to be, 
uh, and to the computer uh, game playing children that sit around and do nothing. I first came here, I told you, in 1985, and people were walking and cycling. I come here now, they're all riding expensive cars. Actually, it's probably quicker to walk sometimes, I'm sure, in the traffic. Uh, but they're not exercising, and you don't need to go to the gym, just walking. So there is this change in modern society. A couple of months ago, I was lecturing in Pune, and the car picked me up from uh, Chhatrapati Shivaji Terminus in Mumbai to drive me there, and the driver wanted to stop on the way for a coffee. And I looked at what was available in this area, <coughs> McDonald's, Burger King, Kentucky Fried Chicken, Indian equivalents of that. And the only place where you could actually get a coffee without sugar was Starbucks. Uh, and that's modern world, and it's sort of globalization, coca colonization of the world, if you like. You've seen this slide already. The problem with complications of diabetes is that they are silent. They don't, patients don't know until it's too late. So you need to screen. And for example, retinopathy, eye disease, was the commonest cause of blindness in, in Great Britain until about five years ago. Why is that? Because the government brought a national screening program. Everybody with diabetes in England gets a letter once a year. They go to the optician, have a photograph taken with the back of the eye that's read by experts centrally, and if there's any worrying signs of eye disease, they get immediately referred to ophthalmology for treatment. Because of this program, diabetes is no longer the commonest cause of blindness. What's happened there? Oh, okay, that's all right. So, it's okay, that's right, it's okay. So the thing is, that the complications are silent until it's too late. Now, Voltaire, Oh, it's gone, I'll settle here. I can see it all this <coughs> so it's, Until it's too late. Um, it's got all these guys in connection. Foot problems, the first presentation is the patient notices there's blood in their socks and their shoes. I had a patient once, I said, I'd like to look at your feet. And he said, well, thank you for asking me, but they're fine, no problem. So I said, I'd like to look at them. <coughs> He tried to take his left shoe off. He couldn't. There was a nail through the shoe, through his foot, and he could not feel it. So that's too late. No, it's, getting, it's getting worse, but I can talk with that slide. The same with kidney disease. The first presentation, the first presentation, when the patient gets symptoms of kidney failure, such as vomiting, nausea, itching, and uh, it's too late. As you heard from Vijay, people cannot afford to have they can't afford to house because it's very expensive. Any joy? It's coming, it's coming. So the complications of diabetes, as I said, are silent until it's too late. So we don't scream. And the early signs are there. The patient says, oh, my feet are fine. And they're nice and warm, good circulation, but they can't feel anything. And if you can't feel anything, then you can walk on a stone. Hello? That's an interesting slide, but it's nothing to do with the diabetic foot, I don't think. <laughs> it might be. Ah, okay, that's deep. Okay, that's right. We put it on. Oh, I need to put it on slide here. Can you put it on slideshow? Anyway, I'll continue on this. Voltaire wrote these words. The art of medicine consists of amusing the patient whilst nature cures the disease. Now that may be true for many areas of medicine, but it's not true for diabetes. And, and I don't, you mustn't take any photographs of this next slide because it's of a patient this is not working either. And I met this patient. It's on here, but that needs to be on slideshow. Yeah, there's a slideshow. Actually, actually, that's okay. 
Right. That's not working well. Right. So I met this patient when I first started as a consultant uh, and associate professor of medicine in 1986 in Manchester. And I met this lady. And she said, please take a photograph of me because this could have been prevented. This lady, you can't see in detail, but she can't focus because she's blind from diabetic eye disease. <clears throat> she's just started on peritoneal dialysis. Here, you can see here, there's a scar. Of, she's had a coronary artery bypass gone. She's got a patch there for uh, nitroglycerin or something for angina. She's got no legs. This is what I call malignant diabetes. I'll show you in a minute. The outlook for people like this is awful. It's worse than every form of cancer. Worse than every form of cancer. But it's preventable. And you can see here in this slide from our friends in Nottingham that the incidence of foot ulcers and amputations, and this is when patients start dialysis. And in the UK, uh, where everybody gets dialysis, even whatever age they are, and the National Health Service, you can see the increase in numbers of amputation and foot ulcers after starting dialysis. But life on dialysis is no fun. These are patients' descriptors, written in the British Medical Journal a few years ago. And this is patients on dialysis. What is it like to live on dialysis? Three days a week, hemodialysis. Dialysis isn't really a life. It's not even half a life, says this patient. But this next lady is more observant. She's a patient with non-diabetic kidney disease. Dialysis is brilliant, of course, but it's deeply horrendous. But then look what she says. On the dialysis unit, patients suddenly appear with amputations. And often before that, they come in with heavenly bandaged feet followed by crutches and wheelchairs. That's a non-diabetic patient observing the natural history of a diabetic patient on dialysis losing their leg. Here is a study we did with colleagues from uh, my center in Manchester, with uh, Dallas and Texas. We showed that dialysis is an independent risk factor for foot problems. Those patients with end-stage renal disease who are not yet on dialysis are much less at risk. The risk is fourfold higher when they're on dialysis. Mortality after amputation is awful. So I was involved with the American Diabetes Association in writing the task force report on diabetic foot disease, how to reduce it. And we said, for those at risk, the highest group of risk, really, patients with nephropathy or kidney disease, especially those on dialysis. I want, that's too boring now. This is our data, these are our data from Manchester. 200 patients, or just under, followed for two years. These are patients on dialysis. The overall mortality, more than half are dead within two years. But if you've lost part of a foot, three out of four are dead within two years. This is worse than almost every form of cancer. We must take diabetes seriously. And in the Sunday Times a few weeks ago, there was a supplement, and on the front of it, it was called O Sugar. And it was a patient there. He said, I thought heart disease was very bad and serious. I thought cancer is awful. But I never thought dialysis, diabetes was any problem at all. And now I've only got one leg. He hadn't been screened. He hadn't followed advice. So I will end with these words of old proverb. Some people make things happen. Some people watch things happen. Some people wonder what has happened. We need to move up, and we need to make things happen. And we need, as Vijay has so very well pointed out, to have a screening program for late complications, because if you catch it early, the outlook is much better. You don't need to have expensive treatment. You can look after your feet. And if you treat the blood pressure, you can prevent moving on to kidney failure in the early stages. So everything is early screening. I will end by saying, Nandri Daniela.